So now we're going to start working on solving these equations. So this question says find all angles between 0 and 360 degrees that satisfy the equation below. So our equation is tangent of theta equals radical 10 over 7. So I'm trying to solve for tangent, and you did do this last year, more in the context of trying to solve for angles and triangles. But what we need to use is something called the inverse tangent function. So on your calculator, if you see second tangent, you'll see tangent, and it looks like to the negative one, but that means the inverse. That's the button we're going to be using. But before we solve this problem, we have to think about something. Whenever I see solving in these directions about 0 to 360, I want to think about, well, what quadrants does t is tangent either positive or negative in? So in this problem, we have tangent equals a positive number. So if I think about where tangent's positive, I can use my ASTC. Remember, this is what quadrants the different trig values are positive in. Um, if you wanted to go back and look at lesson 84, that's where we covered that. So here, if tangent is positive, that's in the all positive quadrant and the tangent positive quadrant. So when I get my answers from that, I'm thinking that I need a first quadrant answer and I also need a third quadrant answer. So even though my calculator is only going to give me one answer, I know that there's, if I set up my triangles, there's also a triangle in the third quadrant with an angle between 180 and 270 that's going to have those same properties and therefore the same tangent value. So now we're ready to do the inverse. So in your calculator, type second and then the tangent button. You want to make sure you're in degree mode because for all of these problems, we're kind of keeping it simpler and we're just doing degrees. So you're going to type in tangent inverse of radical 10 over 7. When you type that in, we're going to go to the nearest tenth of a degree. I should have written that in the directions. Tenth of a degree. Okay. So when you type that in, you should get 24.3 degrees. Now if you didn't get 24.3, if it worked but you got something else, maybe you didn't you'd use tangent, not second tangent or inverse tangent, or maybe you didn't change your mode to, uh, to degrees. Okay, If you're still in radian mode, you will get a different answer because this um, means a different thing for the angle. So once I get my answer, as long as I set this up, I can look at that and say that's a first quadrant answer. So that is my answer right here, 24.3. That's my first quadrant answer. To get my third quadrant answer, I'm going to use the 24.3 as a reference angle like we learned about in the last lesson. So for the third quadrant, that means I'm taking 180 plus 24.3. So that's going to give me 204.3 degrees, and those are my two answers. Now to check this work, if I want to see, if I type the tangent of 204.3, I should get something really close to whatever decimal radical 10 over 7 gives me. Remember, we rounded, um, but both of these answers should give me that same value of tangent around radical 10 over 7. So this is our next problem. We have sine of theta equals negative radical 5 over 8. This could be a decimal too. It just happens that a lot of the problems use radicals in this section. So the first thing I want to think about is where my answers are going to be on that interval of 0 to 360. So I'm going to write my ASTC. Here I see that sine is negative. So it's not positive, so I know sine is positive in quadrant 1 because all is positive, and quadrant 2 because that's where sine is positive. So it has to be in 3 and 4, and I like to think about that. I cross out the positives, and whatever is left is where it's negative. Now, when we do our inverse trig function, to make this the easiest, we actually, to get the reference angle, we're going to type in the sine inverse of the positive value. If you don't type that in, you're going to get a negative answer. It's kind of tricky and adds some extra learning you need. So if you just type this in like this, that's going to give you the angle that we can work with to get into 
the third and the fourth quadrant where our actual answers are. So when I type in the sine inverse of radical five over eight, I should get 16.2 degrees. Once again, that's not our answer because sine would be positive at the 16.2. We want the negative answers or the negative, um, the, quad, the answers that will give us a negative sine value. So to get into the third quadrant, we're gonna add to 180. To get into the fourth quadrant, we subtract from 160. So 180 plus 16.2 is going to give me 196.2 degrees. And 360 minus 6.2, or 16.2, is going to give me 343.8 degrees. Now on delta math, for this type of problem, they're not gonna tell you what quadrants it's in because that's part of what you're figuring out. So you're just gonna have to type your two answers in, um, basically one after the other. There's a way you can do that in delta math, um, but you're not gonna be filling things in the same way you were in the last section. So in this next problem, we have cosine theta equals negative radical three over two. And problems like this where you recognize that that value of cosine goes with one of the special angles, We'll be in a slightly different section on delta math of your homework, and they're not going to have anything about rounding because they're going to give you exact values for answers. So we can start this problem in the same way. Jar ASTC. Think about the fact that cosine is negative here. So it's not positive, so I cross out the two quadrants where cosine is positive. So my answers have to be in quadrants two and three. So I'll set that up down here. Now if I do a cosine inverse, remember we're going to make this positive to get the reference angle of radical 3 over 2, I could also think about my unit circle. I know that cosine is equal to radical 3 over 2 when I'm at a value of 30 degrees. Okay, if we set up our little chart, if you remember from the previous lesson, we have 0, I'm sorry, 30, 45, 60, sine and cosine. I'm not doing this the neatest as possible. And we know that sine starts out 1 over 2, radical 2 over 2, radical 3 over 2, and cosine goes down, radical 3 over 2, radical 2 over 2, 1 over 2. So I know that if the cosine value is radical 3 over 2, the angle is 30. Now, you can also just type that in your calculator, but it's kind of working towards other things in trig to be able to recognize that. So 30 is my reference angle. I want to move that into quadrant 2 and then quadrant 3. So I have 180 minus 30 is 150 in quadrant 2. And 180 plus 30 is 210 in quadrant 3. So these would be the two answers you would type in. So in this last problem, um, we're going to work on a kind of a special case. I have sine theta equals 1. I'm solving for theta. Um, if I think about my ASTC, sine is positive. So I'm going to circle my two positive quadrants for sine, which are quadrants 1 and 2. I'm going to do sine inverse of 1 because it's already positive, so I just keep it that way. And I actually get 90. And if we think about the unit circle, this should make sense, right? Because we have the point zero, 1, the y value is our sine value, and that angle is at 90 degrees. Now what's interesting here is 90 is not really in quadrant 1 and 2. It's right between the two quadrants. So it actually takes the place of both answers. If I think of 90 as a first quadrant answer, and I do a reference angle going into quadrant 2, I get 180 minus 90, which is also 90. So the point here is we only have one answer on this one. My only answer is 90 degrees. And that only happens when sine or cosine is equal to 1 or negative 1. Um, basically, if you think about the graphs, that kind of makes sense too.